Here's the story of the solar magnet. That's the way that it became the sunspot group. The sunspot group. The sunspot group. That's the way it became the sunspot group. The sun and 171 angstroms. You got really low solar activity, solar wind speed and density extremely low, very weak magnetosphere, and a sunspot bursting into existence with a B-class flare. Also we have a coronal hole rotating into the earth facing direction here. Magnetic connection has already been established with that. So let's look at a bunch of other things such as solarham.net. There's your sunspot group 2732. There's the Umbra. By the way, an active region does not classify as a sunspot unless it has these dark umbrae. It's a beta class sunspot group. You can see some magnetic mixing going on there. Thank you to solarham.net. Let's head to spaceweathernews.com. You can see two small solar flares there, one of them up into the B-class range. Largest flare we've had in quite some time. BTBZ is pretty convergent there, nothing too exciting to talk about on that. We do see an ongoing phi angle connection, sun to earth magnetic connection there. Solar wind density last I checked was about three protons per cubic centimeter. And solar wind speed dropping all the way down into the 300 range, about 340. Magnetometers flattening out. We'll keep an eye on that, as there is some there is some uh, magnetic line things going on, which we'll be looking at in a moment. Also, the KP index has been at zero for the last nine hours. We have checked all the cosmic ray monitors that we usually check and nothing really going on there yet. However, I would stay on alert. Human health risk for cosmic ray flux. Here's your Cygnus forecast. Let that play through once. Electron flux, a little lower than it was yesterday. Not expecting this to dip. This will probably rise. Tiny little spike in the proton flux, which we really haven't been seeing lately. No significant charging hazards. And man, oh man, the F2 ionosphere is utterly discharged. Look at that. The highest frequency we got there is 7 megahertz. So, you've got a very very low charging level here. Um, so the disparity between the incoming solar radiation and this discharge isn't that big, but it's very discharged and the magnetosphere will reflect that also. Also, uh, there's your aurora forecasts. Not a lot of note there. Let's look at the geospace magnetosphere movies. Here's your velocity. You can see it is very low, very low. And that's because of the very low density and low speed solar wind stream. Here's the density, also incredibly low. Keep in mind there is some density out here at the bow shock, as you would expect. And also, I would note that the white portions of this are the low density and the blue portions are the high density. Next, let's look at the pressure. And wow, that's that might be the lowest we've seen it since we've been following these on this channel especially the end of the movie. Watch how low this gets.
Check it out. That's the weakest I remember seeing it ever, but I've only been watching this particular data for a little while. Wow, check that out. Let's look at the ground-based geospace perturbations. And the only real reason we're looking at these is to say that there are none. That's the weakest magnetosphere that we've seen in at least weeks. No significant magnetic perturbations. So all the data is lining up there. Very small auroras. Moving on. Look at globalincidentmap.com for the quakes. Look at the last 12 hours. A couple small quakes in California there. Mongolia 5.0. Mexico 4.1. Few in Alaska. Take a look at their location. Off of Kodiak Island. There's your recent earthquake situation in Alaska. Quite a lot of activity going on there. Four point eight in Iran, five point zero in Indonesia. Moving on. Head to volcanodiscovery.com for the daily volcano report here. Dukono, volcanic ash advisory to seven thousand feet. Krakatau, volcanic ash to four thousand feet. Fuego, ongoing eruption. Reventador, ongoing eruption. Shivaluch on the Kamchatka Peninsula, an estimated 17,000 foot ash plume. This was actually uh, yesterday. So, really, the main contributor here to volcanism would be Shivaluch, Gold Star Shivaluch. Looking at the Olu Cosmic Ray Monitor, no significant changes there. Antarctica, really a downtick in cosmic rays from Antarctica. DOMB, the other Antarctica monitor, a downtick there. And let's just show the other ones here. Small uptick in Moscow. And that doesn't really agree with the rest. Look at Mexico City. Small uptick. All right, perhaps it does agree. I stand corrected. And also we'll look at Athens as we usually do. And a downtick there. So no consensus of a cosmic ray increase among the cosmic ray monitors. We will leave links to the reference site. Next, let's look at the uh, Gong 2 data here. This is the line of sight field plot. I would note that the fields are being dominated by the positive charge the positive charge polarity magnetism of the south polar the south solar pole and this active region is still helping to pull the uh, equatorial field back up toward the equator while the south pole is pulling it down toward the south pole there's a tug of war match going on let's look at some other plots Now, 
Now here's the X-ray flux. I'm going to show you something here where the data lines up again. See these two small flares? Of course you see those two small flares. And head to the Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard to look at the GOES X-ray imager. You will see both of those flares at the end of this run. I'm going to come out of the sunspot. Wait for it. There's one X-ray flare. And there's the other smaller flare. Not a lot going on otherwise. Look at a fizz.org article. This happened back on the solstice. You see that dot in the center of Jupiter's moon Io? That wasn't a very good arrow, was it? See that dot there? That's a like several hundred thousand kilometer tall volcanic plume. So we'll leave links to that article. The only thing we'd like to note there is that this paragraph here, Io's volcanoes were discovered by Voyager in 1979, suggesting that gravitational interaction with Jupiter drives the moon's volcanoes. Not so sure on that, as they can't measure the gravitational interaction. Just putting that out there, for those of you who believe in, you know, electromagnetism running the universe. Here's an article from medicalexpress.com. We are shaken in our boots, canceling any European vacations as a study to increase risk of harm from cannabis across Europe. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, that cannabis, man, spooky, spooky cannabis. Apparently the THC levels have been rising. We'll leave links to that article also. I'm not exactly sure what their point is. but have yourself a read and a laugh. And by the way, we are advocates of the legalization of all drugs because of the implications to things like human health from fentanyl overdoses and Mexican drug cartels as they would go out of business overnight. Let's head to CNBC.com, take a quick look at the stock market, which by the way is not the economy. The stock market is just a stock market, a major component of the economy. The economy is the flowing of all goods and services and currencies around the world, not just stocks. So if you, if you think the economy is good, well, there's a lot more that goes into it than stocks. Let's just look at the Dow Jones graph as it is off its lows, which is a good thing. However, it's not the only thing. Now, you can see bond yields are down, indicating a lot of bond purchasing. Oil is at $45 a barrel. Man, if I was a commodities investor, I'd still be buying oil. And we've been looking at silver recently, so let's just take a look at that real quick. Here's the one-year chart. I'd like to reiterate that we bought people one-ounce silver coins last Christmas when it was at about $16.50 per ounce. That's not the one-year chart, guys. What are you doing to us, CNBC? Anyway, we were telling you to buy this at $14, and if you did so, you'd be making uh, $1.53 per ounce. Keep in mind, I'm not licensed to do investing anymore. So take that with a grain of salt. Take it with a whole salt shaker if you like. And the dollar, it looks like it gained a little bit of ground in other world currencies. All the markets went up yesterday. Pretty much around the world. A 
Oh, maybe not. Huh. Europe markets didn't do so well. And Asia markets got hammered also. Next, let's talk about the Federal Reserve for a minute. As the Federal Reserve is the... Well, all central banks are the largest obstacle to capitalism in the world. This book by G. Edward Griffin is was the missing link for me to understand economics. I was a day trader in 1999 through 2001, and I understood the stock market, but I didn't understand the economy. And once I read this book, I sure did. Uh, the reason Federal Reserve is an obstacle to capitalism is because the largest block of business in the world is the interest on international and commercial loans. And so for a cartel of bankers to be able to artificially control this, that's not a market. Um, artificially controlling the prime lending rate is absolutely wrong. That should be controlled by supply and demand just like every other market. If your grocers all got together and price fixed the price of apples, it would be a crime. Banks do this all around the world. Also, also the way banks keep records is absolutely ridiculous. Again, if any other company, if any other type of business did this, it would be absolutely illegal. When you deposit one dollar into the bank, the bank considers that dollar the bank's dollar, even though they have to give it back to you. And then they loan out nine more dollars based on your dollar. They consider those nine dollars their own. And all the interest on all of those loans are considered bank property, which means banks are inflating their net worth by over 10 times. So if a bank tells you they're worth a billion dollars, they're not even worth a hundred million dollars. So from accounting to capitalism, banks are screwing you. And inflation is a hidden tax. Anyway, read the book Creature from Jekyll Island. If you don't understand fiat currency, Federal Reserve, etc., please do. We'll just leave a link to where you can purchase this book on Amazon. Super interesting read. Moving on. Take a quick look at the U.S. Doppler radar on AccuWeather.com. You see some wintry mix falling in Texas. I don't see that every day. Geez, the planet must be so hot that it's cold. And here's the U.S. water vapor map, also on AccuWeather.com. To give you an idea how things are going to interact. And let's take another view as we saw some interesting behavior going on. Looks like we've captured the Hall effect at work again. Check it out in those areas. We'll explain momentarily. Look at that area. Also, uh, we've got some anti-cyclonic behavior in the Southern Hemisphere. Remember, in the Southern Hemisphere, low pressures tend to rotate clockwise instead of counterclockwise as they do in the Northern Hemisphere. This Hall effect is usually very obvious in convergence zones due to electromagnetic fields effects on water. And here you can see all of these lines perpendicular to the mode of motion. Let's look at one other area, which is actually even more crazy. Check it out. Southwest of Mexico. That is the Hall effect at work all day. For those of you who are not familiar with the Hall Effect, we like to show this image regularly. As the solar radiation pours in, it splits into field aligned currents. Those try to equalize each other across what are called Peterson currents. And the energy coming out perpendicular to the flow 
is the Hall currents, like this. Weather patterns align based on these because of their effect on the water. Hall currents. We'll leave a link to the diagram. Let's end the video with a close-up of Sunspot 2732 in 304 angstroms. Thanks for watching. Thanks, subscribers. Remember, when you're staring at sunspots, don't drink. And if you drink, don't drive.